All right. Here is Mr. Chickenfoot, huh? No, it is uh, actually, I like works which are super light, which are floating. I like floating things. This is actually a rebar, a rebar of six millimeters and it's bent. And here I added a few feet, like little bird feet to lift it up that it would not all depend from here. Then I must have a lot of weight here. But I think for the eye, these two very light feet are not too visible. They are fairly dainty, fairly little to see. Now, then I had uh, the overlapping technique. This is also something what we would uh, study in classes together. So that is the overlapping technique. This wire is a 1.2 millimeter wire, which is now, I would say, available in the most countries in the world. And then I have very little miniature tubes. They are attached here under the Cox Comp type of form. And then one of my darlings here, which is the Gloriosa, they call today Superba, but the old name when I was a a student, it was Gloriosa Rothskildiana, you know, like the Rothschilds, the Baron family in, in, in France, the Rothschildiana. And then look what I have here. I have just a few stems of them, but they are a little gift from uh, Magin Parr. New varieties of Clematis diversifolius. I was spoiled like hell years ago already with clematis in Japan. They had uh, a lot of uh, clematis for floristry, which was really a stunning material. And they were wrapping them in uh, newspaper, wet, and then afterwards in wet sprayed plastic from inside. So I learned a lot from this, all these treating flowers for preparation that they last and all that. Then I was really longing when I came back to Europe, let me have a few clematis. And then in the garden, I planted some clematis vines and then for a short time I had them. But the ones here from Margin Par, which are now actually all year available, the good thing about them is that you have many varieties and even you will see today a variety which is very seldom. There are a few people who are regularly working with Marging Par, which are not so far away from them. And they do fantastic designs with the more flowers, not just clematis, also other summer flowers. And this is the wonderful thing. We have many things to combine and also that we are not getting overloaded by tulips. There is a question. Angelica, I see you. <laughs> so a question from Lisa. Uh, how are the feet attached? Wrapping. I'm a big wrapper, actually. If you see uh, Skilo and all these big wrappers, but my wrapping is a different one, you know? So my wrapping is done with uh, paper covered wire or with uh, iron wire. And here are wire pieces this long, about 10, five going this way in this leg and five are going in this leg here. And they are wrapped on the end of that iron bar. Is this answering my question? Next one. It's a question from Pamela. What is the material at the top of this design? Cornus alba sibirica. This is the it's already dry. I had it for Christmas, for my Christmas work, what I posted on Instagram. I'm actually posting every second day a work on Instagram. But they were sitting still in the garden and I said, come on, oops, we go to Holland. And then you have one more time, a good time, in that coxcomb arrangement at Burmas. This is Cornus. You don't have such a wonderful red wood in the world like the Cornus. Cornus yellow, Cornus orange. The yellow one, green yellow one is uh, Stolonifera. An orange one is uh, in Sanguinea. And then the orange one, I don't know. But you have so many colored wood sticks. And when they are in the first year of their growth, then you have wonderful colors, different colors. So that's wonderful for something which is still a bit winterly. More questions? Chitsumon? No. No, she's too much. Okay. 
I actually do have a question. Shetu is asking, how do you determine the materials other than flowers? That's a good one. How can I praise you? Your intelligent question. You know what? Uh, when something is in a modern home, in a modern office, in a modern building, which is uh, going the direction of, you know, like the good old uh, Mr. Conran from England, that interior, what he called modern rustic. Modern rustic is modern, but with more rustic materials. There is an open stone wall. There is maybe a high-tech old weathered factory hall. There is a high-tech zinc concrete halogen light related uh, no that is high tech that's a little different high tech but something where rusty iron where uh, these steel steel tables maybe uh, furniture which is also maybe then with the fabrics in the furniture which is related to this uh, flowers here it is a perfect harmony if you have a modern rustic interior and you have works like that on them but if you say okay now you make it a little punky funky then you spray the whole structures bright red and you take little red anthuriums and even thorny wire and then you have little punk music related floristry sorry there is no punk music related floristry if you ask somebody but i tell you you can design like that and this is what you have to learn when you do your education that the material choice has something to do with the social, not social message, the style message of that what you want to relate to, to be related to. What is the rose here? Sorry, I had to, there are so many new varieties that here is a rose which is very well when the Gloriosa is perfectly three to four days old, then it turns a little into a burgundy, leaves the bright red is Cayenne. So that is a very good thing. And what you need also is the Ripsalis here and the bear grass. Why you need this? Green is the vitalizer of floristry. Green makes floristry alive. If you have just the colors, the bright colors, and you have no touch of green in there, it's possible that we have just dyed dry flowers or artificial flowers. Nothing against that. But what we want to do here is really the lively flowers. We are in the heart of the flower movement in Europe, in Altsmeer. So today we talk about fresh flowers. So I want to show you a group. You know, what you want to learn as a master florist uh, is actually that you know to create a scene on a bigger table, on a long table, to make a series. How much do I need to calculate the number of materials I need? How many flowers do I need? How many corners? How many irons? So if you just order, if you have an endless budget, please go for it. But if you have to make your living by it, it should be calculation, business and all of that. So you see here, the two horses are jumping together here from one side to the other. So that is not so much work if the structures are done. The work is not so much, but the prep for the structures, this is a lot of work. It took me about two hours, two and a half hours to do this too. But to put the flowers in now, in total, it's about 20 minutes. That is not the problem, but people like to really see something. Oh, how is that done? And I think this is a major question we have to fulfill. And therefore, we need very well done education. I uh, have here, uh, there's not a book what I want to sell you. I sell nothing today, absolutely nothing. But I have to say, we offer a big book with sketches, photographs, text, so what we give every week for one week to the master students so that they have material, you know, so that they have material. So with just works and then text again, text in English. So we cannot do this in, in more languages. But look here, sketches for works, different types. So that some of the sketches, they even include more information for you, like a photograph. A photograph uh, fills even a lot of little details in, which are taken away from the most essential 
information. So just the silhouettes of, uh, yeah, you see, Boma Institute. This is not a book of downloads, you know, from other books, from maybe my books, no. This is individually made text for master education and for, for you, it's not what you also find thousand times in the web or what, so it should not be. It is individually, it's your thing. Look at this beautiful, very Asian looking Clematis Sevilla, but that is not the, the only one you see today. There is a question. Yes. Angelica, question let me go. From Carmen, where do you go for inspiration or who inspires you? Um, 335 pages. I did a book, Wellsprings of Inspiration. But I don't want to let you down with an offer of a book by buying a book. No, it is actually, I follow very much five Wellsprings. The one is craft and technique, methodology of design, you know, like uh, the what is visually what I have to develop for the eye what I have to develop for the hand, technique and craftsmanship, that these are two. The third is what do I have, material and flower. This is the hardware of creation inspiration. And then the two other ones are actually the softwares. This is cultural suitability and emotion and situation. I think that's very important. Is this answering your question because of two Discuss inspiration. You can do this about a whole week or you can say actually which creative way do you take and this is actually what I do. So here my uh, inspiration was culture. You came up in the right moment with this question because of this here is Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please hit that like button and subscribe for more content like this. We go live every other week outside from school vacations and try to upload fun content regularly. Now, I would like to take some time to thank our 16 amazing patrons who help us to be able to create these videos. Thank you very much, Linda Nielsen, Ionella Pochevalistanu, Thomas Cleffy, Lisa Florista, Anja Langefeld, Angela Hurd, Timmy Huskinson, James Malloy, Helga Tsukere, Susan Lam, Suliko Tsvilava, Boshar Svetlana, Michaela Wilding, Anita de Vries, Sanyi Yellow, and our latest patron, Christina Burton Fox. If you would like to support us in making these videos, then you can do so through our Patreon. Patreon is an online platform on which you can give creators like us a bit of financial support. Doing these live streams and editing them takes quite a bit of time, but it's also a little bit costly. We have to prepare a day before, shop for all the materials, go to the flower auction to buy the flowers, etc. We really like to keep offering these types of videos to the public for free, but since we are a very small family business with a limited funding, it is quite taxing. Sadly, without any help, we probably have to do less live streams. However, we actually want to do more on YouTube, create more videos, tutorials, fun projects, and perhaps even stream more often. So that's why we thought about starting a Patreon. Now, when you support us on Patreon, it's definitely not a one-sided thing. At least, it doesn't have to be. You will get some fun things in return. For example, you will get a thank you in the credits of every video, because without your support, they wouldn't be possible. Another example is exclusive behind-the-scenes footage. You often ask us how we make the frames and the bases that we prepare and build upon during the live streams. On our Patreon, we will post pictures and sometimes videos of us creating them. Besides that, you will be able to see our newly edited videos ad-free. We have many more things planned for the future, and if the Patreon grows, we could even start doing some Patreon-exclusive online masterclasses and lessons there. So, hop on over to patreon.com slash flowerschool and you can become one of our patrons today. Again, thank you very much for watching and see you in the next video.